my name is Mishan. Um, this is the name of my project, Project X. I've been working on developing a game to help teach kids how to learn programming and things along those lines. It's going to be a fun and innovative way to revise programming and just the terminology of programming. Um, Project X came from, it's funny, Xbox is like my favorite console gaming system to play on, and they actually called their Scorpion or something Project X, so that's where I got that from. So yes, that is that. So overview, motivation, I kind of touched over motivation project. I, I really love making games and playing games. This is my first time actually making a game, but I was always curious. And over the time and over the course of time, I was like, I want to try and see what I can do and also help others learn. Just like the way of some of the other games help you learn, but they teach you without saying like, oh, this is a learning game. So that was my goal with this game. And that was also the motivation. Um, we will also be talking about the problems, the product objective, and who I'm targeting, which I mentioned before was kids and children. And then I'm also talking about marketing trends and things along those lines. So basically, uh, as I mentioned before, when I first started, I had a couple of issues and problems with it. Um, I wanted to develop a 2D game and develop a fun, innovative way to learn. But I thought a 3D would be cooler and more of a way to attract kids and get their grasp their attention. So at first, when I had a 2D game, I ran into a bunch of issues with using the platform that I was using. And the platform is actually called Unity. And it's a game engine you can use. And from this game engine, that's how you develop your games. It has a library of tools and graphical things and things called assets, which you can use to design your level and things along those lines. So that was one of the biggest problems. Having the assets. Getting the assets took a lot of design and artwork, or I had to find a couple of free ones. But I wanted to go beyond that and try to figure out which way can I make the characters even look fun and it made it and cool. So that would take a lot of time, but it was also fun. And that made it very, very interesting to me to learn more about gaming. And then that's why I also switched to the 3D version of Unity. Because there's two different versions, 2D, which you can make a 2D platformer, and then you can also make a 3D version as well. The objective of the game is going to be, you're going to be in this office, is the goal of it. You walk in this office, you're this player, and you're like, oh, I have this awesome, cool job, right? And the office comes from, you're going to be sitting at a desk. Most computer science people have an office or some kind of way to innovate with uh, computers and technology in that form. So that was the goal of that. So you're going to go walk up to your computer, and then you're going to have to answer a certain amount of questions. So the, with these certain amount of questions, what you're going to have to do is, for example, if I ask, like, what is a way that you can go through, what is the term for going through the program over and over again, which would be a loop. So you'd answer some of these questions, and with that, you would also get points. And those points in a later version is going to be, you might be able to get skins or things along those lines for your player, because a lot of children love skins, of course. So that was the goal of it. Target audience, as I said, was children. But children, I wanted it to be, I wanted them to have some kind of knowledge, because this game is going to be more of like a revitalization or a re review of terms in programming, not necessarily teaching them, but as a way of, like, hey, I just want to go touch on some of these key points in programming that I learned. So that is my target audience. I'd say 11 and up, maybe, but I really wanted to keep it around that 11 age, maybe the 12 age. So that way, they at least have some kind of knowledge going in. So this next slide I'm going to show you actually shows the start menu of my game and how the art of my game is actually kind of set to that, as in my level and how all that looks. So here you see, this is my city. And the city would be, it's called poly. It's a, it's a form of art, low poly. And it's just made of a bunch of different shapes and stuff. And that's how the characters are made, the buildings are created. And I really wanted to go with this fun artsy style because it has attracted me. And I still have a kid part of myself. So I was like, you know, being a kid, I would like to have played this before. So as you can see, as times, I'm going to show you this next slide is actually the progression of my first 3D stage and learning what I can do to actually design my level. Because most people don't know, but you literally have to take each piece, go around it as you would in real life. If I'm designing something here, I'd have to go around sculpt it or from ice sculpting. It's the same thing with gaming. You have to do all those things with gaming. So as you can see here, this is actually how it started. Just like a blank canvas, and then just a box around it, and a bunch of cubes and stuff that I use to get the outside layout of my level design. And that thought that was pretty cool to actually see it coming together. But as you can see, you might not be able to tell, but really the funny thing is this is all a bunch of cubes that I just put it together to create this uh, level. But as you'll get further, you'll see my newer progressions when it comes to how it actually looks now. Here are the characters I was thinking of adding, the fun of characters. 
could look kind of funny to me. I've got like, you know, this, the guy in the middle with the tie would be like the boss, and other ones would be like the co-workers and stuff like that. So that is the way that would work. And then those characters would be sitting around you or have some kind of interaction with you. So this is the timeline that I was working on stuff and like the progression of how my actual project worked, how it went from going from the 2D, going from the 3D, and then planning, and then, oh, you know, as any project has, you're going to encounter some problems. So this is the timeline showing and describing some of those problems that I had. And I want to actually finalize the game and add more detail, and that's why I said around June, I actually want to release this game maybe to the public so where kids can get on it and mess with it. I want to create my own website as the goal, and on this website, they'll be able to access this game and some more games that I plan on creating to help them learn. And then that is basically the, the gist of my presentation. Now, I will show you a live demo of my game. This game is not using a controller, because I figured most kids now have pads or phones or thumb pads. So actually, I just use the I use the um, WASD on the computer to move, or the keyboard to move, and the mouse to move. So this is that menu screen that I said, but blew up bigger. So as you can see here, I have a couple of options, settings, and quit. Right now, I didn't want to give the kids too much options, and I don't want to quit because I want to show you guys the game. So I'm going to actually click play here. And when I take it to play, you see here's my character in this newly found office, right? So this office is pretty cool because you saw how it looked before. So now I can kind of give you guys a tour real quick. Here you have like the front desk, and like here you have couches and a vending machine, and here's my guy like, hey, yeah, I'm coming to work. So you can see here's a foosball table. You got to have fun when I work, right? Foosball table, you see a little conference room, and a bunch of other desks and stuff too. And you can see the beautiful lights and plants and all things along that line. And around this corner, I actually have a kitchen. You got to, you know, you got to get something really good to eat and some good snacks, apples, all that good stuff, cook some ramen, the college diet, whatever it is that you do at work. So then over here, when you see I walk up to my computer or to my desk, oh, something happened. And here's where the question thing pops up to where it would have a bunch of different questions and kind of like a quiz template to make it seem like, okay, what is going on here? You know, now I just walked up to this computer and like this thing just popped up. So all these questions appear like, for example, a person who writes code and communicates to a computer is what? And say, you're looking through this and you're a child and you're like, I don't know, is it an algorithm? Is it a code? Is it a command programmer? So what you do is, for example, you just click on the right answer. And if I click the right answer here, it would turn green, and later you'll see it keeps track of your score, and so on and so forth. And here would be the next question. A set of, what is a set of, set of instructions that can be performed without a, a computer, basically? And then if I get the, so like the wrong answer here, so you see it turns red. So I'm going to go ahead and skip to the questions, because now you guys kind of see what the questions are. So say I go through, and here you have a score. So what this score is, it's going to react in kind of like a point system. It was the goal of this, and whatever points you get is going to keep track of throughout the levels you go. Because I also decided it would be fun, because like, how do you make this game fun? You have the points, you have the scans, but how do you make it fun? So the fun aspect would actually be getting to the desk to go to work. And what you'll see here is actually the next thing I'm going to show you guys. In one moment. And it's more of a race. If you guys know what, if you've ever heard of the floor is lava or things like that, where kind of like you have to try to stay on the platform, there's a platformer game, and you have to do that kind of thing around those realms. Well, this is what you're about to see here. So if I go over here in this area, mainly what would happen is you answer the quiz, and it'd be a transition but from there, and be like, oh, where am I at now? And from when you go from there, you would go, to this next area, which would be the platformer. And you'd wake up, my envision is you'd be like, wow, this is a completely different scene than what I just saw. What is going on? So this is what I mean by that race to computer, which I played this multiple times. I'm not that good at it. But if I get to the end, it'll actually take me back to the office. So you see here, this would be your character. And this would be the character that I just showed you or any character that they want to choose, because you'll be able to choose a character eventually. So if I go over here, you have things like coins and extra things to just keep them like, what is going on? These coins is actually money, which you can also use as points. 
points to get skins, points to get things along those lines. Maybe you want to buy an extra tie. Who knows? So, as you can see here, I will try. Excuse me. I will try to complete this game because it's actually pretty hard. So I'm going to jump over to this platform here. Hopefully jump on this next one. Jump on this one, which I failed, and which now you get to actually see what happens now. So pretty much I lost a life. I had three lives, now I have two lives. So then I'm going to go back. So then I'm going to have to do it again. So here, if I sit down, I'll probably be able to complete it. Here what will happen is I'll take the same path. See, I got a little jump, double jump feature, which is fun. And the cool thing about it is, as any game, you don't want it to be too easy. So the goal is, the more and more you play it, and you see like these things going on, it's like, oh man, it becomes more, more and more addicting as you play, because you're really trying to see what's on the other side. So you can see here, I'm going to open up this door. What's on the other side of this door? Well, here's something else. That would be like a big coin or a big way to celebrate, like, hey, you just found something unique. But I don't want to tell the kids and children what it is yet. I want to keep them guessing. But what it actually is, I can tell you guys and let you in on a little secret. All it is is a bunch of different coins and points. It's like a big package or a bag of gold to where, oh, here goes this amount to where I can buy this kind of cosmetics or I can buy this. Because that is a big fun thing. Especially if you guys know Fortnite, that is a big thing for skins and things along those lines. So here I'll go on. Here comes some more crazy stuff that I got to try to get past. And again, it's like, oh my gosh, I don't know what's going on. There's these things trying to stop me and all this other stuff. But as you can see, I made it. I made the game, so hopefully I'm good at the game. And I'm about to go towards the end here. To where I corrected, actually, my time is up. So now that my time is up, and that's also a race to it. If you don't meet the time, what happens is you have to start all over. So when you do make it to the end, to show up for simple terms, what will happen is, you will return to the final scene, in which the final scene is literally just saying, game over, you completed the level, and then you would load it, the level back up, and you would go through it again and again. But instead of going, the questions will get harder and become more difficult, of course. Um, the way you go through obstacles, that's going to be more challenging. You're going to I'm going to plan on adding more cosmetic stuff, adding more characters for kids to choose, and. That is what I call Project X. So, yes, ma'am, that is my presentation. So cool. <laughs> Thank you. The first big thing for me was I underestimated. I love gaming, but looking, playing the game is a lot different from making the game. And I've also learned, actually, making the game really taught me how to program a lot as in terms of scripting and you know, creating those things because it made sense to me. When I'm messing and dealing with an object, just like in programming, when you're creating an object, it's an actual physic ob or a physical object in the game. So my character, if I'm creating a character object you know, through the program or through that text editor that you program on, what will happen is, okay, there's no character here. I'm just saying that this is a character. But in a game, you can physically see, like, if I create a character or an object called stool, this is obviously a stool that I can place in my real-life game environment. And things along those lines really, really, really allowed me to see, like, oh, this is how coding works. This is what a class works. This is how I organize my, I have a lot, as you can see, you have a lot of different files and stuff going on here on the right side. And it took me a while to figure out how do I organize that because I wasn't really used to that. So as I figured it out, it became easier and it made more sense to me. And that's what I would say would be the biggest thing that I learned is really don't take advantage of your projects. Really learn and plan ahead of time and Get your layout first before you start designing and doing those kind of things, because otherwise it's going to be harder for you in the long run. So if you plan first and then see, okay, what's going to be my issues, and this might be my issues. So try to solve those things before you start programming and implementing the things, and the process will become a lot easier and simple for you. So that's pretty much what I learned. It can be any computer. You can just, yeah, yeah, you can load it on the MacBook. And what you can do is, because my goal, once I release this and put it and publish it, I actually want to create that website I was talking about. So that way, if you're at home, or you can even honestly play it on your phone, because I want to make it modular to where you can use any, if you want to use a game pad on it, because that's kind of big, or if you want to even use like your touch, you know, the touch screen and the thumbs and stuff like that. So what you do is go to the website I'm going to create, find the game you want to play, click on the game from wherever you are, and then you'll be able to play it like that. So, um, I don't see myself necessarily staying in education. 
I see myself as, I, I like helping kids and doing things along, the, uh, things along that line, but honestly, in terms of education, because growing up, my mom always, I'm so good with kids, my mom would always tell me, you know, because back in high school, we used to have this thing called the A-plus program, and the A-plus program was basically you work with kids, you'd sit down with them, and of course, I was with PE, so I didn't really have to teach them a strict subject, but me doing sports and all that was kind of cool, I had fun, they were jumping on me, Misha, Misha, all that kind of stuff, you know, kids are, so... That's why I decided to go around this route, but I don't think I could actually educate and teach them that, but I would be more than willing to do it in this way instead of like teaching them. Teaching them through gaming, because gaming at the end of the day is also my passion, and computer science is anything within that realm, and technology is my passion, so that's what I would say would be what I would go in terms of education, the educational route. So, any last ones? All righty, and again, <laughs> thank you, thank you guys.